Good evening. This is Talking Devils, your favourite Manchester United podcast. I'm your host, Wayne Barton, joined by former Manchester United midfielder um, and also midfielder of various other clubs um, throughout Europe, Marcus Neumar, um, to talk over a very interesting week at Manchester United and um, enjoy it from a enjoy it, pick the bones out of it from a tactical perspective. Uh, Marcus, how are you doing? You all right? I'm great. Thanks, Wayne. Good stuff. Um, you'll notice that I'm not keen. Keen is usually here in the hot seat. Um, I was standing in for him. Obviously, Keen does a lot of work on the website. Um, so, yeah, I was more than happy to jump on and talk to Mark from my favourite people in football. And it's been a while. Same, yeah. uh, how, so talk to me about um, how, how things are going with you. I know you're coaching at the moment. I know that you obviously give us a regular update on, on what's going on with Basel. Um, with yeah, yeah I'm, doing the, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the under 13 still uh, with FC Basel, doing my coaching licenses. Uh, uh, also, uh, by, by the, aside to the, to the coaching, and um, I'm very happy with it. Moreover, I'm a TV pundit. For Swiss uh, broadcast, uh, doing the Champions yeah. League and Europa League, obviously. So, moreover, got two kids and a dog, so <laughs> a lot of things to do. And uh, I'm more than happy being on the on the pitch, being on the being the coach. I enjoyed my professional football career, even though I had the most successful career. But I managed to do to have uh, 200 first league appearances all over Europe, uh, Turkey, Switzerland, Germany. Unfortunately, not in the Premier League, but I was in the squad once at least for United. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying my coaching role at the moment and hopefully uh, good things will come, yeah. If I may say so, um, it's great to <laughs> see, like, you're doing the punditry and everything like that. It's great. I absolutely love when you post the pictures on your on your Instagram about it. You are immaculately dressed when you go on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great suits. You have great suits. I love it. It's... Um, Thank Fantastic. Um, okay, yeah. So if you if you're watching live on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Feel free to get your questions and comments in. If you're watching on the replay as well, um, do feel free to comment. We do reply. And if you're listening back on the audio podcast, please be sure to um, subscribe and leave a review on the platform that you're listening on. All right. So Liverpool four, Manchester United nil. We all know what happened. It was a <laughs> disaster class of a game. Um, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. The last 24 hours, some obvious um, candidates have been called out, the players, um, for various reasons. Um, on this channel as well, we've done that with the, the post-match pod. And, um, I don't know if, if it's wise to go over some of the stuff, but there is a lot of stuff, because it was such a heavy defeat, because it's such a symbolic defeat, with still some stuff that we should pick the bones out of. And one thing I was thinking about uh, that hasn't really got a lot of discussion because because of the nature of the def defeat and the fact that there were a lot of individual errors in, it, in the game, is that it's, um, you know, you lose five, uh, sorry, four, four nil. But yeah, United no. packed the defence out. You know, they packed the defence. They played a 5-3-2 formation. They changed the defence. They moved uh, Maguire over to the left when he's been playing on the right. They, you know, that's obviously something they've changed around. It, you know, nobody wants, in this moment in time, nobody's looking to give the players an excuse for what happened last night. But did the change from the manager contribute to, to what happened to us? Um, normally, I would say the tactics always play a big role because players need to feel comfortable on the pitch. They need to know when they have to move out uh, of the defending chain. They need to know where the spaces are offensively, defensively and so on. But I think at the moment, I think it's a wrong, wrong discussion. As um, if we see United playing yesterday, there, there has been such a big lack of emotions a big lack of desire. Um, it's everything. I was so interested in United like 20, 25 years ago. It's completely missing. And if we see Liverpool at the moment, it seems like they're a few years ahead of us. Like if you watch the desire, if you watch the technical level, if you watch the tactical level. Um, I mean, the past few years, we always talked about players, right? But I think... 
we have to talk about the club itself because the club itself is bigger than any player, you know, bigger than yeah. any any manager. And when Sir Alex Ferguson was there, nobody talked about the manager. They just talked about the club. And in the last few years, everybody's talking about the Pogba's, the Ronaldo's and the Sanchez and who, who, it's Jadon Sancho and whoever comes in, everybody's thought he's going to change the thing around. And with Ronnie, we had sort of the same idea, but but I think everybody as United, who's a United supporter, has to understand, and even more the board members, that it has to be about the club. They have to define a strategy, a strategy for the next four or five years and then go for it. Give it to the hands of Ten Hag, of Rangnick, whoever. You know, if you watch at Liverpool, what Jurgen Klopp has uh, created, it's outstanding, you know. And in his first year, what did he do? Did he become eighth in the league or seventh? You know, it takes time. But in, in United, everybody seems to be talking about individuals and not about the whole club. So I think at the moment of time, it's not about the tactics or about the individual performance of one single player. Because at the moment, it seems like you could put in anybody, any player in the world, <laughs> it wouldn't work out, you know. So yeah. there seems to be something completely wrong at the moment. And I'm not a big fan of uh, Roy Keane, how he is commenting and discussing about the, 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 the performances. But last night, I think he was spot on because it's not about the players anymore. It's about the club. And if you don't see any emotions anymore, if you don't see any desire, and if you see like a 17 or 18 year old coming on the pitch like Hannibal and he's fighting for his life, yeah. you think what's gone wrong in the whole in the whole squad the last few years? You know, it's it's it's, it's really strange. Yeah. Um... A couple of comments here from Ajmal. He says, hello, um, Ragnick is the best. Well, he's certainly someone we'll be talking about on this podcast with uh, the way that he was honest after the um, after the game last night. So, obviously, the, the, the manager packed the defence and from the fifth minute, well, from even earlier than that, United were panicking. They are all over the place. Um, the error for the first goal... Um, I, I don't know. You look at it first time, and it looks like an obvious Maguire error. The, the common theme with Manchester United goals, which are conceded this season, is that on first glance, it always looks like an individual error. And then the second time you look at it, you can see three or four people. You think, oh, God, that's a, a yeah. mistake. Um, it's a systemic mistake. And I mean, do you think that that's what it was? I mean, when you see Maguire that far up and out of position for the first goal, um, is it a system error? Is it just a player making a rash decision way too early? It's very difficult to say. I think it's always important that, that the back four, the back three, the back five, they learn to play together, you know, and, and they have to get along with each other. And I think this is the most important thing in football, that they have a chemistry in between ongoing. If you yeah. watch the best defences in the world, we could we talk we always talk about United, so we talk about Gary Neville, we talk about Nemanja Vidic, we talk about Rio Ferdinand and the left back Gabi Heinz or whoever it was. But they, you know, yeah. they were not the best players in the world. I'm, I'm I'm just saying, but they knew what the other guy was doing right next to him, right on the right side, on the left side. And at the moment, it, it's that that seems to me the biggest problem, you know. Like if Maguire goes up, Lindelof seems to be two, three meters behind him, or the other way around, you know. So yeah. everybody is like fighting for himself. He's fighting his own battle. But they should do it together. And 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 with the first goal, I mean, there were two Liverpool players on the right side, completely yeah. breaking through without no United player even near them. And I'm asking myself, you know, if it, they're playing with a back three, with a back four, that should never happen. That, that's what I'm saying, you know. We shouldn't talk about the tactics. In a game, Liverpool against United, in, in such a fundamental way, and, and also the, 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 the idea, the moment of time as it was, and after four or five minutes, you, you, you not even have one foot in the game. You know, I cannot imagine a game like 20, 25 years ago in that way because there were two or three lads on the pitch who took somebody, you know, and and maybe they were yeah. one nil down. But after that, they were awake, you know, they knew what to do. 
And at the moment, yeah. nobody seems to take this responsibility, you know, even though when Ronaldo is not there, it's even worse because then nobody takes his responsibility. Yeah, no, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I want to talk to you about Paul Pogba. Um, I've gone on record over the last 24 hours. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm going to tell you my opinion of it. Um, I thought the first 10 minutes obviously came off in the 10th and... You know, I'm 40 years old. I've been watching United like my whole life, and that's the most disgraceful thing I've ever seen on um, in a Manchester United shirt. Um, what he did. Yeah, um, yeah. Now you're a foreign lad. You played yeah. in the reserves. You captain the reserves. You played against Liverpool reserves. You literally just said to me there that playing against Liverpool is different, and you've got to have, there's a certain responsibility playing with that. He obviously didn't get it. There's something in the disconnect with the relationship that he just doesn't get it because you just don't do what he did last night. Um, I'm not saying that you stay on to the point of breaking your leg or anything, whatever the injury is, but you stay on for a bit. You don't you don't give up like that. Um, what What is it? I mean, I, you've literally just said there that you got it. You understood what it was like. So you understood that yeah. rivalry. You understood how special it was. Yeah. Why? What is it that was missing from this? Not just Pogba, the entire team last night, because nobody seemed to get what they were fighting for. Because it, let's be right, they're not just. It's not just one game. We're talking about the fact that the 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 squad and the system that you were in at the time at United, yeah. and when you yeah. were challenging for the league titles, and we were trying to claw back Liverpool's like nineteen, and, and then we did oh eighteen, sorry, and we got to nineteen, and we got to twenty, and you were part of that process, and you know how important that historical fight was and how hard yeah. it was to get there. And now it's just like they've thrown it all away. I just And they, they, they don't seem to care about it. It's just, what, where's the disconnect? Why don't they seem to understand what the rivalry means? It's a little bit like the thing I said in, uh, in first place, you know? At the moment, we talk too much about individuals. And I think Pogba is a very sensible lad. And at the moment, he feels like he's misunder misunderstood. And his way... Um, connecting with people outside is a way as he did last night, you know, and he's uh, in a very unlucky role. And I don't like it either what he did last night, but it's it's the picture he has shown us the last two, three years. And and the problem United has over the last 10, 15 years, correct me, but on the Sir Alex Ferguson, we never talked about tactics. We never did, you know. It was just about... You know, was it a good game? Was it a bad game? Maybe we talk about one, two substitutions, but we never talked about are they playing a four for two? Are they playing a four three three? And yeah. and that's what I mean. You know, that the whole energy, the whole idea, the whole feeling about putting a United shirt on is not there anymore, and it it needs to be created again. So as Liverpool is doing the past few years, you know, they are creating something, and and we shouldn't talk about more like players who have to be brought in. But I have to be. We have to bring in. It's more about the, yeah, the style we have to play as as United. You know, we have to identify what are the principles for being a United player. You know, and at the moment, United just seems to buy players who are doing good in other clubs. But we need to find out what are the principles of Manchester United. What is the main idea? What what, what football? We want to see in the theatre of dreams, you know, what, what, what United wants to stand for in the next five to ten years or whatsoever. And if this is defined, we can talk about individuals or maybe even tactics, you know, because we're 20 years ahead and, and obviously tactics are very important in nowadays. But, but I am missing so much the basic idea of what United was standing for, you know, under the era of of uh, Ferguson, everybody knew what he had to do, you know, and everybody felt that when he put the shirt on. And at the moment, people or players don't seem to get it, you know, it, in these special games against Liverpool, against City, you know, against Arsenal, they're special games. And you don't see it for them. It's just a common game. And the team seems to be so fragile. It's, 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 it's unbelievable because if you watch the, the single players one against one, and you compare them to the Liverpool players, you think, OK, we have a good game. You know, it's a 50-50 game. But then you see the first, the first uh, three, four, five minutes and you think, bloody hell, they're nowhere near the standard Liverpool has, you know. And and this yeah. is is so shocking and and nobody has the answer to it, you know. Not even Ramnik has the answer to it. Otherwise, he would change it. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's 
fundamentally something going on so badly over the last 15 to 20 years that they have to change it. They have to make, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of saying we have to restart because you don't have to throw everybody out, but they have to define principles. They have to define what they want to stand for. And if they have that, then they can, then we can talk about players. Yeah. Do you think, um, it's very interesting because you were definitely a part of this process that I'm about to talk about. United have, um, well, it's been announced today that two of the chief scouts are going to be moving on, or that two of the chief people in the scouting network, um, Jim Lola and uh, Martel Bau, they're going to be moving yeah. on. Um, you talked about United defining principles. Do you think that maybe perhaps a part of it is the other way around? The, you know, like before, before Jim Lola, I'm not saying anything bad about Jim, but let, let's rewind the clock a little bit to when, and I hate to say this and keep banging on about the Fergie era, but one of the key principles that never really gets a lot of um, discussion in the Fergie era was the fact that the scouting was so comprehensive. It wasn't yeah. really about what you were like as players. It was about what you were like as people. And you, that yeah. was something that you would have been subjected to. They would have been looking at how you were as a person. And you were only like yeah. 14, 15, 16. Do you think yeah. that maybe that's something that's missing? Because it seems to be something that's almost, it seems exclusively missing from this entire squad. Yeah, I think, that, as I said before, they have to define principles. And at the last few years, like, you know, there seems to be like a lot of, I say, like, if you are, if you if you work in the kitchen, and you're preparing a meal, and you have ten different cooks, you know the meal gonna not, is not going to be fine. You know what I mean? And for me, the last 10, 15 years, it seems like everybody was trying to do something, and in the end, they thought there will be a good outcome. And th that's what the what the picture is for people from outside, you know. And and with Fergie, he was just there, and he, he gave his idea on everything. He was not always 100% spot on, you know. He even had some bad decisions about PK and Rossi and some other players, you know, where he misjudged. But but they had a clear idea what they want from the scouting, what they want from the from the training facilities. They want they knew what they wanted in training. They knew what players they wanted to recruit, you know, young players or even players who are gonna be a prospects in the in the coming years. Yeah. They had a main idea. And at the moment it seems like everybody is doing a job with his own ideas and with his own principles. And after two years, two, three years, you feel, okay, it's not going the right direction. You throw like 50% out of the club again, you start new again, and the other 50% are, are still in the club, you know? And and therefore, the picture they're doing at the moment, the picture United has for people from outside is disastrous. Because, you know, the, the, the whole main idea what United was standing for, it was always been clear. And I think for us fans and supporters, it still is, but I think for the for the people working in the club, I think it's not clear what they want to do, what they, how they want to work, how they want to play football, you know. And and this is something that makes us supporters so mad because we're expecting something, and we see the complete opposite, you know. And and it's not always good, like going to television, like Gary Neville and uh, Roy Keane, and talking about the good old times. But but the main idea was there, and at the moment. It's not there, and that's why they are so angry and so yeah, also a little bit under yeah. the a little bit too much, you know. They give it out a little bit too much, but but they're right, you know. They they, they have to they have to ask questions now, serious questions also to the Glazers, you know. What 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 did they do the last ten years? What did they do the last fifteen years? You know, what, what should the club look like in five years? And then they need to find out a strategy, a strategy, and then, yeah, give time to it, you know. And then maybe next year we won't see a big, big year of Manchester United, but maybe the next two, three coming years will be different. Yeah, that, and that you're absolutely right. And for fans, for long-term fans, and I'm certainly included in that, you put up with a year of. Well, you, even more than that, if as long as you can see progress, as long as you can see there's something they're building towards us is an identity there. And I think that's one of the things that I was so disappointed about with, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I felt all well, they should have been psyched and because 
the situation had gone away from him, but I, I still liked what he was building, and I felt it was a massive shame that everything went backwards on that. Yeah, um, yeah. What, and you what, know what, the thing is, Wayne. You know the thing is, Wayne. We had so many good coaches. We had Mourinho. He was he's one of the best. Yeah. We had Ole. You know, he knew what what Fergie did. He he he, he was with him. He, he saw it. Yeah. We had so many great coaches. Then the past two years, we had so many great players who did so well in other places. You know, so. The idea is the coaches, if they come to United, don't work out. It cannot be only the coaches. If the players come to the club and they don't play as good as they did before, it cannot be only the players. So, yeah. as I said before, it has to be something else that is fundamentally going wrong and the energy is not the same as it used to be. And and United supporters are, have always been so close to the team and they had such a good feeling when to support the team and when they really had a go for it. And sometimes even then they lost, but but they felt when they were fighting for it. And at the moment, that's why so many people are so angry because they don't feel that that pride when they put on the jersey, that fight they want to give up, you know, they, 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 they don't feel it. No, no, you're absolutely right. Um, Ajmal asks how much of the situation down to Joel Glazer and Edward Wood. I think you basically covered it there. It's, it's, it's a shared, it's a shared load. And you know, I'm happy to go further than that. And I have done another podcast. Just before we finish on Liverpool, I want to just ask a quick question about um because Ryan Nick came out after the game and he, he was very, very honest with a lot of things that he said. And one of the, th- the things that he questioned was about the players picking up injuries. And I think it was a it seemed a little bit like it was a job, you know, he was jabbing at the play honesty with injuries, maybe like the, the you know, they could play on or they could play games where the, you know, there seems to be a lot of play. Like, I mean, Cavani's a great example as well. But yeah. it does actually come into the game as well. Because if you look at, um, there was a, a moment um, I was reminded about where Wan Bissaka, um, mm-hmm. he looks out of breath midway through the first half and he, he goes and gets a water bottle and he's like, he's, he needs a big rest. And then and then within a couple of minutes, he's being like outrun again. Do you know, he's losing his man all over, like he's completely unfit. And you know what a good defender Juan yeah. Bissaka is and how, what his stamina is probably uh, normally like. Um, I was just wondering what, what your thoughts are on the general stamina and fitness because, I mean, we saw it a lot under Mourinho. A lot of these players that suddenly got a lot of injuries. And to be fair, under Oli, we didn't see that a lot. And now we are seeing it again. Is it like a, is it like a, I know it sounds cynical, but is it a case of when morale's low, uh, you know, the, the niggles will seem a lot more serious? Yeah, I think you're not not far from it because you know the if you pick up injuries, it always I, I that's that's what I felt in my career. I always had injuries when 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 I was confronting myself with uh, yeah with heavy material. That means like if if something is not going right in your life, if you're frustrated, um, if 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 you're not happy with with uh, with some things in your private life or even in, in your professional football life. Then, then you seem to be picking up injuries more easier than than you used to, and and th- that's what I said. Something with the energy, you know. If there's not good energy around the team, there's no good spirit, you know. These things seem to be, yeah, go up quite quite quick and quite fast. And and as I said before, the team is very very fragile at the moment, and and it doesn't need much at the moment. To take this 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 team out of their comfort zone and and therefore I'm not surprised people like Pogba who gave an interview a few weeks ago that he's very sensible in some ways that he's so often injured because that they they are struggling with their with their mental health at the moment you know that they, they they seem to be balanced but but on the other side I understand on one side I can understand Ralph Rangnick but on the other side I need to to, to say it's his job. That the players feel well and comfortable, you know. That's that's the other side of the medal, you know. So it's not always easy to 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 criticize, but but I think it's it's more harder to find solutions. And and he's in a position now to be a coach to find these solutions. And he is a he's a guy who's quite honest. And and I think at the moment he seems to be in a position where he yeah he seems helpless. That's that's why he is putting out this stuff to the media. 
because um, he, he needs to ask himself, what can I do to influence my players? What, how can I make them better? How can I make them more fit or make them feel more comfortable on the pitch, on and off the pitch? Because injuries not always happen on the pitch. You know, they start to to build up in your head and then, then you sometimes feel it in your body because your body reacts to your mind. And if your mind is not going, going right, then you'll pick up injuries quite easily. And therefore, as you said, I think you're not far from it. It's really interesting that that insight there, um, Marcus. Um, thanks for sharing that. Um, Arsenal are next up. Um, we're playing them at the weekend. They've had a, a run of bad defeats. We're recording this live while Arsenal are playing and they're currently winning at Chelsea, um, which is probably par for the course with United. You know, like the, the, the corner is going to turn for them and they're going to be in good yeah. form. Um, yeah. What, oh, what to expect? I mean, normally they, they don't score a lot of goals without Aubameyang, but they are doing tonight. They're scoring three. United look vulnerable at the back. Um, they're going to be confident they're taking on United and taking the game to United. It's, for me, it seems like it's very poor Premier, Premier League that's allowing United to even be in contention for the Champions League spots at this point, considering how poorly they've played and, and the level of poor performances they've put in. Um do you think that United, uh, did they have a chance of getting to the Champions League? Or do you think that... Yeah, I think it's very, I think at the moment it's very difficult. But, you know, the chance is still there. And um, I think also with the game tonight, Arsenal, they always they always have qualities. But they're also very fragile as United. Not as fragile as United is at the moment. Because they seem to have more consistency. And they, they seem to have more... Yeah... Key players like Chaka, you know, he's a, he's a player. When he's playing well, the whole team is playing well. If he do, if he doesn't have the good day, it's affecting the whole team. And at United, the only guy I see is Ronaldo. If Ronaldo is not there, then the team the team seems to struggle, you know. And and um, I hope that Ronaldo will will be back in, in in that crucial game because they need him, even though he might not be in his best form. But they need him as a as a team player, as a supporter, as somebody who's holding the moral high, the, the energy high, and and this is sometimes more more important than than yeah, playing the best ninety minutes of your life. But as I said before, I think it will be a, a tough game because uh, for United it's not so bad that you, that Arsenal has won tonight. Um, at the moment, I don't rate Chelsea as high as I rated them two three months ago. Um, as if you have an owner who's selling the club and who is in a really bad situation, this affects the club. I mean, I, I felt it myself. I was in a club where the, where the club was bankrupt and um, yeah, we played 20-30% less good and I felt there was a different energy around the team and and that's what, that's what I said before, you know, football is such a fragile thing and um, if you have these issues going on in the club, Therefore, the Glazers, they have a big, big role in that in that whole thing. Also, at Woodward. So, I think yeah. they need to be very, very careful with their decisions, what they're going to do in the summer. Because if they want to take any money out of that club again, then they need to, yeah, they need to, they need to change the idea. They have, they need to have strange, uh, uh, good principles. And they need to have a clear idea. And, and yeah. then things will go good again and things will start to be, look different. But I, I hope that United will still make the Champions League and I and I think also against Arsenal that, that hopefully it's going to be a, a different game and hopefully we will see a different approach of the team. I think that's the only thing you can ask for. You can ask the team to approach the game different as individuals and as a team and to give it a try, you know, to fight at least because against Liverpool... All of us felt like there was no real fight because Liverpool was pulling them all over the show. It was like men against boys. And and the one thing you want to see that they are at least trying for for, for the shirt, no? Yeah. Um that brings us on nicely to, to round off the show, talking about Hannibal who came on. Um there's been talk about him coming on for the last few weeks and, and playing the game. And uh Ragnick said after the game you, you know you would prefer to bring on a player. At three nil, a young player at three nil, but unfortunately, we haven't had any three nils. Um, so yeah. we had to bring one with three nil down. And, um, he, you know, he came in and he put his foot in and, you know, ruffled a few feathers. 
And the idea has been that you don't bring in a player to pretty much a toxic environment, which United have, have had in the last few weeks, or something that's felt close to that, because it's not healthy for a young player to come into. Um, so it's interesting to ask your point on this. You, you mentioned right at the top of the show that you played that you'd been in the um, squad for one of the games, and that game, I think it was West Ham in yeah. 2006, and we had O'Shea and Giggs in midfield for that game, if I remember rightly. And um, Obviously, those two are top professionals. Who, if you'd have come in for either of those players, you know that you would have had someone helping you along and trying to bring your game along. You don't necessarily see the selflessness in, in this current United side. But so that has been my reservation of bringing youngsters into this side is that you, they might not have a, a top professional who's, who's looking to help them because yeah. half of them are already looking elsewhere where the next move is. But when you see Annabel come on like he did last night and he put in a foot and he looked like he was putting in a bit of effort, is it still worth a chance of putting them in anyway, even against like an Arsenal or a Chelsea in the next game after that? Yeah, definitely. If you want to bring on young lads and young prospectful players, you always have to bring them on, like Rangnick said, when you're 3-0 up or if you're 4-0 down. Because the thing is, when you bring young players in, they, they, they don't care about the situation. They, they just want to prove themselves and they want to have a go, you know. And, and the, good, the good thing about it is if a young player comes in and he proves himself and he gives in a good energy and he shows that he wants to go, it makes also the people around them look bad, you know. And that, that is what happens. And therefore, it's also good for the senior players or the experienced players that they feel... Bloody hell, you know, this young guy, 17, 18 year old, comes in and has an impact. And me with uh, 200 Premier League or 300 Premier League play, uh, games in, in the pocket, I couldn't do nothing, you know. And this is the effect also Ralph Rangnick was looking for. And, and he, did, he did well to do that. And young players have a different perspective. That means if when you enter as a young player, you, want, you play in first place, you play for yourself. You don't care so much about the club. I mean, it sounds really, really hard, but but it is as it is. You want to prove yourself. You want to yeah. make a career. You want to show, hey, I'm here. I'm I, I enter this platform, and I have every ability to do so. And and if you reach that level, I mean, we talk about Rashford a lot, and and all these players, the the Lingards and all them. You know, they, they, they are in a in a in a I should say in a in a, in a period where they seem for themselves that they have proved everything, but for us, yeah. they didn't, you know? And the first step to, 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 to come into that period, like Hannibal has done, is, is at the moment, or Elanga, it's always very good for the team. So I, was, I would always put in young players with a good ambition into the team. The yeah. other thing is to put them out of that comfort zone, like Rashford and, and Lingard and all of them are at the moment, because they, are, they seem like... They have they made it, but in reality, they, they are ruining their talent, if you ask me, because uh, they have given uh, a massive opportunity with an amazing club. And from, from my point of view, they don't do as much as they should do, because uh, they have great abilities and they let themselves down, if you ask me. And, and players like Hannibal and Alanga, they are so important now, because this will put the pressure high, even higher for the kinds of Rashford and all of them, because then they need to step up the game. Otherwise, they will, will they will not be talked about again, you know, and that's what they want. They want to be in the media. They want to be talked about. They want to play. They want to score goals. And if there comes a young guy like Hannibal and everybody's talking about him and admires him, this, this also is a positive side that can affect the team. Yeah. Would you um, be tempted to put him in from the start? Definitely. I would put him and Alanga straight in. I mean, at the moment, they have nothing to lose. You know, it's, it's, it's a win-win situation. And this also gives a yellow card to all the senior players. You know, it, it shows them, listen, you had your, you had your chance, you didn't, you didn't take it. Now there are other players uh, on, the, on, the, on the pitch. And I, if I was wrong, Nick, I would do it. And I think he will, because um, he, he always had the... The idea and the, the how you say the the courageness to put young players on the pitch. He did it at Leipzig at uh, Offenheim. He did it at, uh, with the Red Bull 
You know, it's it's the main idea, and that's what he should do also with United because that's what United was all has always been about. You know, under the time with uh, Fergie. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, Jason Prime also mentions another name, Alvaro Fernandez deserves a chance. All four fullbacks have been dreadful this season. Garnacho as well. You can imagine getting a few minutes. Uh, certainly, these are illuminating players who. Um, have been they're definitely worthy of a chance, um, as much as anyone at the moment, and certainly players that United fans and Marcus will know this much better than I do for sure. United fans want to see these kind of players play in the side and have a little bit of energy and and um, some connection, really, because the, the United fans are disillusioned as well, especially after last night. And Annabel, um, I mean, literally the only good thing to come out of that, um. And even that is saying something. So I mean, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm more yeah, encouraged. It's, it's, what, Wayne, it's, it's what the club has the club has always been about. You know, it's in it's written in the history. You know, when it started with that plane crash, and uh, United was forced to do that. And in the end, we saw that that United the, it's in the DNA to put to give young players a chance to give them a run out. You know, to pr- produce young prospective players and give them a platform even if it's in the theater of dreams you know and that's that's what united the idea has has to be going backwards to you know because it it always has been the time when they put young prospective players into the first 11 they've been successful always liverpool did the same with trent alexander trent arnold they did the same thing i think united has to do the same thing as well you know have the courage to do so, what happens? One season, you're going to be seventh or eighth instead of being number fifth or sixth, you know? So where's the difference? Uh, tell me about it. I, I don't I don't see it. But in the end, yeah. if you can produce a home-trained player, that's 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 what United is about. Always yeah. has been and hopefully always will be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 100% agree with everything that you've just said there. And... Um, yeah, it's worth. I, I have been on the fence about it. I've been like, oh, I don't know if it's a good environment for these kids to come in. But then when you see how fearless he was and hearing you talk so enthusiastically about it, then yeah, um, I, I'll tell you what, I'd be more um, up for the game on Saturday or I think it's Saturday or Sunday with Arsenal if um, if I see a couple of those kids on the on the team sheet for sure. Um, yeah, that's it for this week. Marcus, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate that. Really good to talk football with you. Um, and hopefully I'll be back on soon to, to be with you and Keen on, on one of the shows. Um, if you've enjoyed watching on, on the channel, give us a like and subscribe on uh, YouTube. And if you're listening back on the audio podcast, please be sure to give Thank us a review. No, it's, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. <laughs>